A binomial counts the number of successes in n identically independent trials, with p representing the probability of success on a single trial. A common example is to toss a fair coin n times, with p equal to 0 0.5. The distribution of the probability of x is shown here for n equals 5, 10, 25, and 40 tosses. The height of each rectangle at x represents the probability of obtaining x heads, or x successes. The center of each distribution is called the mean, or expected value of x, which is shown in red and denoted mu. For a binomial, the mean is n times p, and its standard deviation, sigma in pink, is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. Notice that the entire distribution changes for various values of p, representing different unfair coins. Large p produces relatively tall rectangles over 4 and 5, meaning we would expect almost all successes in n trials. This is like a high percentage free throw shooter such as the great Dirk Nowitzki taking 5 consecutive free throws. Most likely he'll make all 5 or perhaps 4 out of 5. Small p, on the other hand, could represent a shooter such as Dwight Howard, who is likely to make less than a majority of the five shots. I'm now going to show how the entire distribution changes in a gradual way for various values of p. Let me also take this moment to explain how the standard deviation, sigma, is a measure of the spread of the distribution. As we said already, sigma is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. The pink tick marks on the x-axis represent the number of standard deviations from the mean. For many but not all distributions, most of the outcomes fall within three standard deviations of the mean. We now return to the case with n equal to 10 trials or 10 coin flips. Change the probability of getting head in each toss, and notice that there's skewness in this distribution for extreme values of p. For p near 1, such as 0.8 or 0.9, the distribution is skewed left. It is symmetric when p is near 0.5, and the distribution is skewed right when p is near 0. For n equal to 25 tosses, we notice that there seems to be many rectangles. The height of each one is computed using the binomial probability mass function shown earlier. In other words, this is a very tedious process. For example, the probability that you get at least four heads means four heads, or five heads, or six heads, or and so on. One would not enjoy computing all those probabilities individually. So instead, we typically use a binomial table in the back of most stats books. The final case shown here has n equal to 40 tosses. Notice how the distribution is perfectly mound shaped. In these cases, a continuous normal distribution, shown here in green, can be used to compute probabilities of the binomial x. The corresponding normal curve is nearly coincident with the height of each rectangle. The only exception to this is for extreme values of p, i.e., when three standard deviations become less than zero or greater than n, 